buddy, this is our list of 35 tips and hacks um, taken from our website, teamhacklife.com. We have a list of 101 uh, survival tips and hacks, and I just chose 35 of them. Um, I, they're not the best. I mean, the best are on the website. These are just like mediocre to awesome. Um, so watch this video and uh, yeah, enjoy it. Ah! Purifying water with bleach. I'm sure that many of you know that bleach is used to purify water. It's just something you never really think about if you're bunkered down in your house during a big crisis and your emergency water has become contaminated with bacteria. So if that happens, find some bleach. The ratio of bleach to water is two drops of bleach to purify one liter of water. Make sure the bleach is unscented. Purifying water with a clean cloth. Nobody wants to drink dirty water, but sometimes a situation may call for it. While boiling water removes the bacteria, it doesn't do anything for the mud and rocks. Since dirt and other particles may irritate the throat and clog up the lungs, it first needs to be filtered before ingesting. Using two clean containers and a fresh piece of cloth, pour the dirty water into one container, dipping the end of the fabric into that water and then the other end of the fabric into the other container. The water will travel through the cloth and drip into the empty container as clean water. Hot radiating rocks. Large rocks should be placed around your fire, not only because of safety, but because it will create a more significant amount of heat. The stones around your campfire will absorb the heat and can still keep you warm after the fire has run out. Kitchen fires. Dousing fire with water is so ingrained into our subconscious that sometimes we do it without even thinking about it. In the case of an oil fire in the kitchen, it's the worst thing we can do. When water is poured on a grease oil fire, the water sinks to the bottom of the pan and evaporates quickly. This causes the oil to rise up and shoot the flames even higher. The best thing you can do is when faced with an oil fire is to turn off the heat and cover the pan with either a lid or a damp dishcloth. Keys for self-defense Anyone can fall victim to a mugger, but it's always better to be prepared rather than becoming a statistic. One way to protect yourself is to use your car keys as a weapon. Just make sure to not place the keys between each fingers, because you'll probably end up breaking a finger. Hold the entire set of the keys tightly, except for the most prominent key, and use that as your hammer type attack. It's effortless, yet highly efficient. Making a crayon candle. You can make your own emergency light source by using crayons. They will quickly catch a flame and burn for approximately 30 minutes. Don't remove the paper wrapping since it helps by acting as a wick. They can also be melted down into a glass with a wick and used as an actual candle. You can even throw in a few drops of vanilla extract for a beautiful scent. Mosquito repellent. Before heading out into the wilderness, place a few fabric softener dryer sheets in your backpack in case you forget your bug spray. Rub the dryer sheets all over the parts of your body that would be prone to mosquito bites. The scents of these dryer sheets will not only mask your human scent, keeping your matches dry with a bottle of Tic Tacs. If you carry a small box of matches made of thin cardboard and it ends up getting wet, there might just be a better way to keeping your matches dry. A bottle of Tic Tac is the almost the same length as your typical wooden matches. Place a few matches in the Tic Tac bottle by popping off the lid. Cut off a piece of striking panel from your box of match and place it also in the Tic Tac bottle. Now you'll have a simple way to keep your matches dry. Purifying tablets. The very first water purifying product you should even think of buying is some water purifying tablets. One problem is that there's a lot of people that don't even buy them because they don't even know they exist, especially if you're a beginner. 100 pills treats up to 200 quarts of water and you can find them on Amazon for about $10. First aid kit for 100. You might think that buying a first aid kit that an office building would typically purchase would be an exaggeration, but you wouldn't know how long your survival situation will last and how many people will be involved until the time comes. Helping others that could be joining you could prove useful in ensuring your own survival. Learn and carry a first aid handbook. It's never too late to pick up a first aid handbook and at least learn the basics. Even if you don't know how to fix every medical situation, then at least you will have the handbook to guide you through different medical procedures. Water jug lighting. 
This one is simple, all you need is a clear water jug. The bigger gallon jugs are better to disperse more light. You'll also need a headlamp because of its built-in strap. Fill your jug full of water and add a few drops of bleach to prevent anything from growing in there. Wrap the headlamp around the jug and have the light shining towards the water. This will create significantly more light than just a headlamp pointing towards the air. Have a bug in and bug out bag ready. Most people only think of making either a bug out bag or a bug in bag slash shelter. You should always have both because there's many natural disasters that will force you out of your home like flooding or mandatory hurricane evacuations. You still need to be ready to leave your shelter at moment's notice. Have two fires on the go. If possible, try to build a second fire after you've made your first one. With two fires, you will at least have one fire left if the other one unexpectedly burns out, leaving you in the cold. Carry a small pencil sharpener with you in the wilderness. You might be wondering if I'm just running out of ideas here, but this is a great survival tip. You can make some excellent dry tinder with small twigs and a pencil sharpener by sharpening the twig and using the shavings as tinder. This is also great in wet conditions because the inner shavings of the twig is going to be dry. How to treat a thermal burn. A thermal burn is a type of injury resulting from making contact with heated objects such as boiling water, steam, hot cooking oil, fire and burning objects. If you suffer from a thermal burn, you should take off your jewelry and the clothes that are in proximity to the affected area, rinse the wound with cold water for approximately 20 minutes, and then cover the burn with a sterile dressing. How to treat an acid burn. A chemical burn occurs when living tissue is exposed to a corrosive substance such as strong acid or base. Chemical burns also follow standard burn classification and may cause extensive tissue damage. You should then apply a neutralizing solution made up of soap, soda, and water, and use a sterile dressing. Never apply oil, cotton wool, ice, antiseptic, or iodine on a chemical burn. Caught in a whirlpool while swimming in the ocean. If you're swimming in the ocean and become caught in a whirlpool, you will need to dive into the water. When you're sinking, push your body in the direction of the current and ascend back to the surface. How to deal with motion sickness. If you're prone to motion sickness, try this quick acupuncture technique. By pressing between the two tendons on the inside of your wrist, about a couple of inches from the base of your palm, and relax your arms and shoulders. Try it for about 30 seconds and you may feel immediately better, but some people may need several minutes. This technique also helps relieve anxiety. Feeling sleepy behind the wheel? If you're driving and start feeling tired, there's a few tricks you can do to help you stay awake and temporarily boost your energy levels. One method is to take a deep breath and hold it for a few seconds and then profoundly exhale. Do this continuously until you're no longer falling asleep. Pull over and rest if this exercise doesn't really work for you. How to defend yourself against a shark. If a shark is attacking you, you should fight back by jabbing their eyes and clawing at their gills. Don't try to punch their nose since the force from your punch will be significantly lower due to water resistance. What to do in the event of a dog attack? If you're in a situation where a dog is going to attack, you should slow down and stay calm. Use whatever you can to defend yourself and don't look at the dog directly in the eyes. Try to act fearlessly against a dog and command him to stay back. You can also try to distract the dog by throwing something in hope that they will fetch it for you. Walk away slowly without making any sudden moves. What to do if your child swallows a battery? This survival tip is crucial if your child swallows a battery because this emergency is so much more dangerous than you might think. If the battery becomes stuck in the esophagus, the electrolyte fluid will burn through the mucous membrane within two hours and will cause significant damage to the esophagus walls. When you become aware of the fact that your child swallowed a battery, you need to see a doctor immediately and have them do an x-ray. If they discover the battery stuck in the esophagus, they will attempt to remove it promptly. If the battery has passed the esophagus and is now in the stomach, it will naturally remove itself, but the child must still be observed by a medical professional. Don't do this with an aggressive dog. If you're facing an aggressive dog, one thing you should never do is show your teeth by smiling. Smiling to a dog is like giving the middle finger to a human, and the dog will take it as the ultimate aggression and will most likely attack you because of it. Just remember, don't smile, even if you're nervous. Quick way to avoid a nuclear shockwave. 
If you're witnessing a nuclear explosion a few miles away, you will have to immediately get to a safe area to avoid the initial shockwave. If you're in the wilderness, however, try to find a ditch and huddle inside it. A shovel will prove useful if you have one to dig yourself a trench as fast as you can and hide in it to avoid the dangerous shockwave. How to survive an AI attack This kind of world extinction event is becoming more and more realistic according to Stephen Hawkins, and I kind of agree with him. If our robotic creations decide to exterminate every one of their gods, I'm talking about us when I say gods, uh, you'll need to stay off the grid. The only way to survive this is to disappear for good by staying offline and living entirely off the grid and have a self-sufficient life. But either way, you'll eventually be found and killed. Sorry. Personal water filters are cheap, so just go ahead and buy one. In recent years, I've come to realize that carrying water while on a wilderness trek is no longer a survival necessity. You can now buy personal water filters like the Life Straw and the Sawyer for approximately $25. These survival gadgets transform almost any source of water into clean and safe drinking water. If that's not a great survival tip, then I don't know what is. Escaping from a crocodile. Crocodiles are clumsy creatures and running away from them can be very successful if done the right way. Run away from the crocodile using a zigzag type movement since they will have trouble turning and will end up slowing them down considerably. Moss full of rainwater. Another great way to collect water is through the moss. If there was a recent rainfall and you're in need of water, find some moss and squeeze out the water inside it. You can gather as much as a liter of water within 20 minutes. It will do the job even though the taste might not be the greatest. Duct tape or birch bark to prevent snow blindness. You can make ancient pair of goggles using birch bark. The Native Americans used to make these to prevent snow blindness by cutting some bark in the shape of glasses and slicing two small rectangular eye holes. You can also make snow goggles using duct tape. Using a little twig to keep the goggles on your face is a remarkable fashion statement out in the wilderness. Toilet paper protector slash holder. One thing you won't want to lose due to wet weather is your toilet paper. Using dry pine cones to wipe your butt is no fun at all so you will want to keep your toilet paper dry by placing it into an old coffee can and slicing a line the width of the tissue. Do not spread the word. Don't brag or advertise around your neighborhood that you're building an emergency shelter in case of a crisis. If people know about your little secret shelter, it won't be too long until you have dozens of people knocking at your door and using up all your resources you would typically have kept for you and your family. Only tell the people you'd want to help or that you can afford to help. And the last tip is prepare for multiple emergency events. An enormous amount of survivalists will only prepare for specific disaster they think would just be the ones that would affect them in their area. Some will only prepare for hurricanes while others will prepare for significant power outages. If you're going through the process of building an emergency shelter, you should prepare not only for one disaster, but multiple disasters. You never know what unknown crisis could be coming your way. So basically, never put all your eggs in one basket. So there you have it, 35 survival tips and hacks taken from our list of 101 survival tips and hacks on our website. So click the link below in the description of this video to check the entire list. I promise you, you'll probably not regret it since at least one of them is going to save your life. I mean, there's 101. So you can either get uh, chased by a crocodile or drown or fall off a plane. One of those three is going to probably happen to you. So check it out. Oh, and uh, like and comment and subscribe. Everybody says it, so I mean, I might as well too. So do it. Thanks for watching, by the way. Appreciate it.